Dear Simon and his hopefully forgiving friends. Well, probably one will and yes. the other won't, is my guess. My confession is set in the early 1990s. Target. <laughs> First term at university. Myself and some newly made friends were walking home to our student halls in the early hours of the morning, kebab in hand, from a student night out at a local club. This is it, yeah, go on. There are so many confessions which have started with exactly those opening sentences, but it could go in many, many directions. To our surprise, a police car pulled up and the officers who got out informed us a group of youths matching our description had caused damage to a shop window in town. Despite our denials and objections, a van was called and we were taken to the local police station, quotes, until this is sorted out, said the desk sergeant, where we were put... Oh, I should have done a voice there. <laughs> Go on, then. Yeah. You're there till this is sorted out, lads. Cover them up. Anyway, we were... <laughs> We were put in a room. Ray Winston again. Go on. To wait. Ray hasn't been around a while, no, you know. No. Well, at the station, we'd all seen episodes of Juliet Bravo, so we knew our rights. In the 90s. <laughs> so we demanded our phone call. To our surprise, the police agreed, or called our bluff, one of the two, because quite honestly, who are we going to call? Anyway, it was the first term at university. Not long living away from home, and nobody wanted to phone our parents in the middle of the night to say we were being held for questioning with a kebab. <laughs> Not wanting to look like idiots to the police, I said, I would make the call. Looking at the policeman in the eye, I said, I want to phone my brief. Because I... <laughs> it was Sweeney time. I had watched the Sweeney as a child, says Jimbo. I was taken to a room with a phone and the sergeant said, you've got five minutes, because they all talk the same. <laughs> now, I really didn't know any solicitors and I wasn't going to phone my parents either, but I was at the time, and this is where we take a left field turn, uh, a keen supporter of my local football team. A lower league team who normally never achieved anything, they were playing very well, who were at the top of the table, and they'd played that night. Now, this is the early 90s. There were no smartphones to speak of. If you wanted to know the football scores, you had three options. CFAX, oh, yes. the newspaper the next day, or a thing called Club Call. Club Call, yeah. As matches, uh, all, uh, at, at matches, you would be given a business card with a premium rate number that you can call where a recorded message gives you team news or scores from the day. I had one of those cards in my wallet. So I phoned... For my one call, I phoned Club Call and was pleased to find out that we had won again. <laughs> it, was, it was a header in the 74th minute by Justin Fashionu, who we had acquired wow. on a free transfer and was playing well for us, which was a result. So I think this is Torquay. I'm guessing this is Torquay United. OK. He played because uh, Justin was there 91 to 93. So I looked that up and he was playing and he played very well for them. So I think Jimbo is a Torquay fan. OK. So there he is. He's arrested and his one call is rung to find out how Torquay are doing. <laughs> I returned to my friends and could see the panic in their eyes and the hope on their faces as I walked in. What did they say? They asked. Say nothing and don't accept a caution, I said in my toughest voice. Say nothing, don't accept a caution. This was based on something I'd seen in the bill. <laughs> well, my friends appeared to relax and about 40 minutes later, the police let us go. Apparently the real culprits had done the same thing uh, further causing further damage on their journey home. So it couldn't have been us as we were already speaking to the police at the time. As you can imagine, everyone was very, very relieved and thankful to me for making the call, so I decided to say nothing, but tell them the real story at breakfast in the morning. As it had been a long night, I didn't rise until late the next morning, only making it down to the TV lounge for St and Greavesy. By this time, our arrest was big news in the halls of residence. I'm not sure if it was my friend's poor memory or if they'd bigged it up, but the story now was that we'd been arrested. Uh, we were seriously going down for a long stretch. <laughs> and if I hadn't made some calls, we'd have all been facing porridge. <laughs> How many different... Yeah, well done. Anyway. Well, Simon, I couldn't say now that I'd only phoned Club Call to find out, I'm imagining, how tall he were doing, rather than a brief, could I? To be quite honest, I quite liked having the reputation of somebody who was a bit of a streetwise guy who had a brief on a speed dial. I have to say, to my shame, I said nothing for the rest of the term, the rest of the year, or even for the rest of the time at university. To be honest... We had a 20-year reunion a few years ago, and again it was brought up, and I still said nothing. But now it is the time to come clean. Simon, I ask for forgiveness, not for my fellow cellmates. 
Quite honestly, my lies, ga- my lies gave them hope and calmed them down, and not from the other students, so I never corrected the next day, but asked for forgiveness from the local constabulary. The cost of the club call was a premium rate number, yeah. and I was on the phone for at least the five minutes I was allowed waiting for the scores for my team, and so I am sure they must have been in trouble with the sergeant when the bill came in and questions were asked <laughs> about who was calling premium rate phone numbers in the middle of the night, <laughs> something which I'm sure never happens now uh, at all. Anyway, so uh, a good story, a good police story uh, from Jimbo, using his wit and imagination, quick thinking, and he gets to find out that Justin Fashtu scored a goal in the 74th minute. Bobby Pryor. Uh, With all this bravado, I can still imagine that inside all of you were actually quite terrified. I mean, to be put in a van, to be taken to the station, uh, and you weren't charged, which is good news, but actually the advice was good, take a call, so it was good on that. I think in in these circumstances, because I think you were actually quite scared, and this is a kind of distraction technique, uh, I think I can forgive you. I think I really, really can forgive you. Actually, I feel for you, because I think you must have been actually really, really quite worried, because if something else hadn't been happening at the same time to, uh, you know, to to clear your names, it could have ended up quite messy. We don't know, do we, really? So you're forgiven, because okay. I think the scare was enough. I let's think... face it, you didn't do anything wrong, did you? Not at all. I think the next track should be Police Truck by the Dead Kennedys. Oh, or something else by but the it's Dead probably, Kennedys. No, I don't think we're going to play Not any of <laughs> Holiday in Cambodia was really good. Thanks to yes. the B-side. Anyway, uh, Matt, what do, what do you say well, to Jimbo? I, I, I love this little trip down memory lane, because I remember Club Call, and the, the, the whole point of Club Call was because it was a premium rate line, they wouldn't give you the best news at the start. So they would try and keep you hanging on to find out who scored the winning goal. Oh, there was a winning goal, and it was in the 74th minute. Oh, who scored it? Oh, we're going to tell you in about five minutes keep you hanging on the line spending the money um so uh, i yes what i particularly like i don't know what that voice was but um i really like this and i love the fact that they're channeling big Vern from viz of doing a stretch in chokey i ain't going down uh so uh yes i am definitely gonna forgive